I'm Hyung Sin Kim living in this city. And today I'll be talking about MarketNet, which is an asymmetric transmission power based wireless system for managing e price tags in markets. This is a collaborative work with my lab members, Ho Su Cho and Myung Sum Lee, and also my advisor, Se Young Bak, and also two of the local chairs in this conference. Jung Hyuk Baek at Jung Hyuk University and Jung Gil Go at Aj University. First of all, thank you for your sincere and active collaboration. <laughs> to begin with, I did a quick search on the Google map of Los Angeles area. You can see here lots of red dots. Do you know what all these are? Something. They are all markets. Markets are prevalent everywhere and take a huge part of our everyday life. They provide a variety of products and we frequently go there to get these products for our daily use. As a wireless systems community and as people who try to make everyone's life easier, we always seek opportunities to simplify the way we live. So, we started this work by asking how we make this market a little bit smarter. Among many routine tasks that occur in markets, our work focuses on price tags. One of the most straightforward, repetitive, time and labor intensive tasks in the markets is the reconfiguration of the price tax. Since the price has a significant effect on the customer's behaviors, it changes very frequently, depending on their purchase pattern, inventory, competitive market information, and freshness. Not only that, in typical markets, there are several types of prices. Membership, non-member, discount, and buy one, get on free, etc. The management of these different types of prices, when it's done manually, is prone to errors. Now let's look into more details about how these price tags are updated today. After the market manager decides to change prices, staffs print the new price tags in the office, go to products, with the new price tags and replace them. Is there any problem here? Yes, unfortunately. Honorable Marketplace is quite large and has numerous products. So the staffs have to go back to the office and repeat the same procedure again and again until they cover all the price tags in entire market. So the first issue is labor cost. Moreover, because the staffs are not machines, they can make errors, which would bring out customers' complaints. This is the task that we want to automate. However, we had a little knowledge on the market environment, nor were we conf confident that the previously proposed network architecture would be the ideal choice for these environments. For this reason, we investigate link characteristics in market and propose a network architecture for these environments. And we call this market net. I'd like to start from application scenario and its requirement and go to preliminary, prelim, preliminary study in market environments. And I'd like to describe the market net design and performance validation. Let's start. This is the scenario that we are considering. First, there's a market server in the office and each product in the market has an electronic price tag called ePrice tag, which has a low power wireless module and low power electronic display module. And there's a route which is connected to the server through internet 
and connected to each e-price stack through low power wireless networks. So each e-price stack can have bidirectional connectivity with the market server. Using this network architecture, whenever the server wants to update prices, it can update them remotely. Moreover, we can envision that each e price tag senses the rack status and reports this information to the server also remotely. Based on the market net, we can easily enable additional applications such as shopping carts which have electronic screens. For example, we can imagine that the server, up, server informs the customers of important sale events and attract them. To support this application, our market needs to fulfill some requirements. First of all, unlike many wireless sensing systems that have been deployed so far, our market net should deliver downward focus traffic from the server to the e-price tax. Because in our scenario, the price updating information is the main source of data. Second, market net should deliver, uh, should update the price tax more reliably than manual updates, sure. And the third, each e-price tax is required to use battery as its power source for easy deployment. Given that the battery replacement is another source of labor cost, each e-price tax should consume low energy for prolonging the battery life. Lastly, typical markets have network managers who are familiar with IP protocols. So our market needs to be IP compliant. Before designing MarketNet to fulfill such requirements, our first question was this. Is our market, our target environment, wireless friendly or not? Let's look at this short video clip first. So noisy. This is the market that we've done our experiment in. How does this look like? Very crowded, right? So markets may be wireless unfriendly. However, you know, this, is, this statement is not scientific, so we want to more quantify this. Let's recall the research philosophy of the census community. Whenever our community members wanted to design a system for an unexplored, unexplored area, they have confirmed their system performance through real deployment and real data. For example, they visited Great Dog Island, wildlife, volcano, bird's nest, redwoods, bridge, hospital, and rural area. In fact, it's a little bit surprising that urban marketplaces have not been explored yet, even though they are very close to our daily lives. So, how about crowded markets? We like to answer this question through real experiments. This is the map of our target environment. The targeted urban marketplaces place displaces more than 10,000 types of products and is visited by over 5,000 customers per day. Very crowded marketplace. And in part of this area, we deployed one transmitter and three receiver nodes and made the distance between the transmitter and its receiver increases with the receiver node ID. The reason why we selected this partial area is very simple. Here is the most crowded area. And now, let's see the results. First of all, let's look at packet reception ratio of each link, both for day and night times. Here we can see that the daytime PLR is significantly worse than the nighttime one. The difference between the day and night time is obviously the presence of human. So human activity degrades wireless performance severely. Let's look into more details 
by using the cumulative density function for per mini PLR of link two, both for day and night time. Here we can see that the daytime PLR is not only worse than the nighttime one, but also its CDF shape is totally different. It spans from zero to 100%. So another impact of human activity is very severe lean quality variation. Given that the human activity impacts the lean quality and the number of customers may change during the daytime, we can ask, how population concentration impacts link characteristics during the daytime. To get the answer, we plot the per hour conditional PDF called CPDF of link two, and also the number of customers per hour, like this. Here, please note that the left tail length of the CPDF, I mean the black region, increases with the link burstiness. Let's keep this in mind and see what happens as time goes by. The number of customers changes, and also the link burstiness changes. Specifically, we found out that the number of customers and the link burstiness are negatively correlated. So, our market's wireless environment has population varying link burstiness. This is not the end. Uh, about 10 days before the census deadline, while analyzing deeply the experimental data, we found out something strange. Let me share this by using the two figures, per mini PLR of link two and per minute average received signal strength indicator called RSSI of link two, as time goes by. Here we first thought that it's reasonable that the link fluctuates in a short term manner due to general human activities such as Wi-Fi usage or movement. However, at a certain moment, the link quality is suddenly and dramatically dropped and never recovered again. What's the reason of this phenomenon? To get the answer, we kept watching the shelves where we deployed the nodes and finally observed that. A staff refilled the items on the shelf where we deployed the transmitter and confirmed all the three links experienced sudden quality drops exactly at this time. It was a quite new observation for us because we did not sufficiently understand the unique activities in markets. And from this example, I like to share is, what I like to share is that typical market activities can change the wireless environment and cause long-term link quality fluctuation. Another example of typical market activities is handing out food samples. When cooking, a microwave oven is frequently used, and it is a well-known wireless interferer in 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. To track this impact, we did a noise sampling near the sampling, full sampling booth near the microwave oven and got this graph. It shows that a micro, microwave oven generates very severe noise. So the microwave oven is another source which impacts the link characteristics in market. So far, I've shown that our target environment wireless link characteristics is very dynamic, not only due to general human activities and also, but also the mark some market specific activities. Let's keep this in mind and move on to the next question. Can low power multi-hub network protocols overcome such link dynamics? To get the answer, we exploited IPv6 routing protocol for low power lossy network called Ripple and low power listening protocol called LPL. We selected these protocols to fulfill the major two application requirements, low energy consumption and IP based network. We deployed one route and 30 nodes throughout the whole market and generated downward forecast traffic by mimicking the daily price tag update patterns. 
let's recall that the, one of the major application requirements is to support downward focus traffic. And let's see the results. First, PLR over time for 10 hours. Here we can see that downlink PLR is relatively lower than uplink PLR. And also, downlink PLR fluctuates more over time. So Ripple is weak for link dynamics when delivering downward traffic. Then let's see PLR of each node. Again, for almost all nodes, downlink PLR is worse than uplink PLR. And also, Ripple's downlink suffers from more PLR unfairness among nodes. So given that these results confirm 10 maximum retransmission efforts, Ripple cannot provide reliability in dynamic environments when delivering downward-centric traffic. An interesting thing is that Ripple was designed for LNN, low power lossy network, which have link dynamics. And there have been some previous work which shows that Ripple can provide reliability in dynamic low power lossy networks. Then, what's wrong with this Ripple? Here I'd like to point out that yes, Ripple along with many other sensor network protocols, was designed for LLNs, but for upward-centric traffic. In Ripple, only children nodes can update and change the route, initiate the route change, and they update their link quality based on upward traffic. Then let's see what happens when this Ripple delivers downward-centric traffic like this. When the link becomes bad, packets start to be lost. But the problem is that the child node uses just two of the lost packets for link update. So it changes its parent very slowly after lots of downward packets lo are lost already. Therefore, Whipple may not be suitable for downward traffic entry application. So far, I've shown that our target application has downward-centric traffic, and our target environment has very dynamic link characteristics, and then Ripple cannot support our target application in our target environment. So we design MarketNet. We consider both application requirements and environmental challenges when designing MarketNet. Specifically, our MarketNet has four design elements asymmetric transmission power, neighbor forwarding, network-wide superframe, and then ripple-based architecture. Let me explain the detail about them. The first attribute of MarketNet is utilizing asymmetric transmission power. Here, uh, our approach to achieve reliable downward packet delivery was not to improve downward routing. Instead, we decided to eliminate downward routing. How can we do this? Given that the root is typically a wall power device and free from energy consumption constraint, we allow the root to use much higher transmission power than low power nodes. Using this capability, the root can transmit its downward package in a single hop. In the case of Omlink, we still use Ripple to transmit omnic upward packets and also maintain low power profile for the nodes. So our market that provides single hop downlink and multi-hop omnic transmissions by using asymmetric transmission power and Ripple together. The second attribute is neighbor forwarding. A problem in the asymmetric transmission power based network is the root is hard to confirm the packet delivery because it cannot receive ACK packets from the low power nodes due to its limited transmission range. To alleviate the problem, we allow neighbor, for neighbor nodes of the destination to overhear the downward packets from the root and also 
add package from the destination and confirm the packet delivery. So if they fail to receive act from the destination, they forward the overheard downward packet to the destination, which results in downward, reliable downward transmission. The last attribute is network-wide superframe. Here, our idea is that to use high power root transmission to synchronize the own nodes in the network in the time domain. And based on the time synchronization, we allow all the nodes to share a single superframe like this. In the beacon period, the root transmits broadcast beacon signal for time synchronization. In the downlink period, the root transmits downward package to update price tags in a single hop. Next, in the omlink period, each low power node can transmit upward package, broadcast ripple control package, and also, and also yeah, forward the overheard downward package. And also, here we, I, I'd like to point out that we can provide spatial reuse for upward transmission by separating it from the high power root transmission. Lastly, in the omlink period, all nodes sleep and maintain low power profile. So far, I've described the market the design, and let's see how it performs. To evaluate the performance, we used the same physical topology as the previous experiment. Only different thing is that we used 10, a 10 dB amplifier for the root to boost its transmission power. And let's see how it performs. First, downlink PLR. We plot the performance of Ripple, MarketNet, and MarketNet without neighbor forwarding. Here, by comparing the purple and blue lines, we can see that use asymmetric transmission power can mitigate the fluctuation over time. And also, by comparing the green and blue lines, we can see that the neighbor forwarding of the MarketNet can improve the downlink performance. So, MarketNet can improve downlink performance. Next metric is omnic PLR over time. Let's recall that our market that uses Ripple for omnic transmission, so at the best case, our omnic PLR could be the same as that of Ripple. But on top of that, you might expect that omnic, our omnic PLR should be, could be worse since it uses high-powered root transmission, which has large interference range. However, as you can see in this figure, our market net does not sacrifice omnic performance due to network-wide superframe architecture and synchronization. The last metric is energy consumption. We use average duty cycle over time. Here we can see that uh, market net can reduce duty cycle nearly 50% compared to Ripple. This significant reduction comes from three reasons. First, our market net does not require control packets, Ripple control packets for downward routing by using asymmetric transmission power. And second, also it does not require multi-hop downward data relay burden also by using asymmetric transmission power. Lastly, LPL, let's remind that LPL is an asynchronous protocol and a sender does not know when its receiver wakes up, so it needs some repeated transmission overhead. But our market net, by using network-wide superframe, we can eliminate this kind of overhead. The final metric is duty cycle failness. Here you can see that the market net can provide perfect fairness because our network-wide superframe forces all the nodes to share a single, a sa the same wake-up schedule. So far, I've shown that our market net can provide some reliable performance in dynamic environments. To conclude, we have explored and unexplored and designed a system for markets with unique requirements. For us, the market net experience was successful in identifying wireless performance in a new environment and designing a system to address the application challenges. 
I will finish this presentation after sharing some lessons I've learned during the experiment. To do experiment in market, you need to be very talkative with staffs because it's reality. They initially think that you are tapping and aggressively ask, what are you doing here? Why are you tapping here? And it's very scary. Second, we need to become sincere customers, continuously buy products and eat food in the targeted market to let them know that we are not free riders. It's reality also. Lastly and most importantly, we have to, we must protect our precious devices from curious children customers and cleaners. In fact, unfortunately, we lost one of our sensor modes and my computer. <laughs> Thank you for paying attention.